Welcome back to the Origins Summer Preview 2017. I'm Mark, and today I am here with Mike Ritchie from Rather Dashing Games, and he's brought us something really cool. Uh, thanks, glad to be here. And I see that you have the appropriate hat, uh, which well, is very helpful. It was on the, the memo of it the It was on the dress, memo, right? Yeah. Code. yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what we got today is uh, something that you're familiar with. Yes, you, I am. You played it in Vegas a few months ago. Yep. Uh, it's called Hafid's Grand Bazaar. Yes. And uh, this is a pre-production copy, um, you know, homegrown, home printed. Uh, but this will be releasing in September of this year. Uh, and so we're really, really excited to, uh, to get it out. So, um, just want to jump in? Yeah, jump right. in. Tell us more about it. Okay. Well, it is a, uh, it's a bidding and negotiation game that leans very heavily towards the negotiation. Yes. So like I said, this is a pre-production copy, so I'm gonna show you the inside of the box. Okay. Put that right there. Yep. Got our got our rules, and what we really like is... Oh, this is really cool. Yeah, the board just is gonna fold open. Fold out, really very slick. Very awesome. Really slick. Yeah. So everything about this is gonna have a really, really high production quality to it. Very, very excited. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So cool. a couple things that make this game really, really unique. Uh, the first is that we have cards that are dual-sided, and all of these are, there this is actually go. the back of the cards, all right? So you're dealing with the partial information of your uh, opponent's uh, resources and resources on the table, but with the perfect knowledge of what that item actually is. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes some of this negotiation in this game really unique. Right. So you've got this city, and you know, caravans from all over the, the ancient world have come to do trade in your great city. Right. Like Orient, Greece, Rome, Egypt, so on and so forth. These cards will populate all of these various, various cities. We then uh, take bidding cubes and we bid for the opportunity to visit those. If you, if you, you can be outbid, competition's pretty fierce because of a very limited number of bidding cubes. Uh, you can then claim these cities in order, then you would add those to your warehouse, which is your hand. You can also bid on ways to manipulate the board. You can uh, try and figure out what that information is in the cities. You can try to acquire cards from other people's uh, caravans when they claim their caravans. Mm -hmm. And you can also be bid on the negotiator. And that yeah. is where this game really, really It sticks, really does. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, that, was, that is the, my favorite part of this game. So you need, you're need negotiating to try and get various uh, items. And right. they can be sold in various ways, which mm -hmm. I'll get to in just a sec. But we really have three rules. You can't lie. You can't steal, and you have to honor your agreement. Right. Beyond that, everything's up for grabs. The gold that you're going after, you don't see that gold here, but the gold you're trying to collect from each other, uh, cards, uh, you can give them access to uh, customers you may have bid on. You may just even trade for a favor that you have to honor on the next round. Uh, I could take your pizza. If you're willing to give me a slice of pizza for my card, that is legal. That's right. Uh, and that goes on and on. But the interesting thing is only the players that have put a cube on the negotiator right. can initiate negotiation. So everything it, has to travel through them. Everything. So That's if there's six awesome. players and only two people have done that, all the transactions have to go through them. So they stand poised to make some money or curry Serious. favors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and after that is, we then after that negotiation is, is done, that's the biggest chunk of the phase. After that's done, we then sell to customers we may have bid on. So like I said, you can offer these as mm -hmm. trade as well. So you can trade exactly um, this this customer wants sets mm -hmm. this customer wants various categories this customer wants everything in a category you know so there's various ways to score each one offering a different different advantages yeah. and disadvantages depending on how you're able to manipulate the market and acquire those resources once that done once that's done new caravans come it repopulates uh, the marker passes the next player and you go again that is awesome okay so what are, how many players two to six okay and what's game time like uh, game time, it, it's very dependent on uh, two things. The okay. number of players, uh, because you play as many rounds as there are um, uh, players. Okay. So you have a marker called the Hafid marker. Mm -hmm. It looks a lot like that guy. Nice. And he gets passed between rounds. The exception is two players, you play two rounds apiece. Okay. Um, so that's, that's the first factor. The other factor is, is how rambunctious is your crowd? Uh, a lot of times, like all through the test play, yes. it's just gamers and non-gamers alike. That first round, everyone's polite. It's like, um... I'd like some red cards, and then after that, it's like, no, you're gonna wash and wax my car <laughs> if you want this. Uh, so it, it gets it gets crazy. So yeah. I mean, you're looking at 30 to 90 minutes. Okay, it's gonna be either quick or right. a little bit lengthier. Yeah, I think the game we played was about an hour. Roughly. So yeah, yeah, I think, and it was just a blast. It went by so fast, and I, I agree. The the negotiating bit and having that like, I think at one point I was the only one that was 
negotiate, and they had to go through me. Uh huh. And that's what I I gathered up lots of coins. You destroyed this man destroyed, destroyed us in Las Vegas. Yes, it and was. We've been playing quite with amazing. real money. Yep. Yeah. It would have been phenomenal <laughs> <laughs> for you, not for me. So my wife also wins. It. She's like, I only win about half the time. I'm like, yes, but that leaves that other half divided amongst <laughs> divided all of us. Else. So that's awesome. Okay, so when is this going to be available? September of this year. Oh, September. It's, yeah, awesome. it is in manufacturing right now. Oh, fantastic! So it's, uh, it's coming. All right, great. Well, Mike, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate Thank you. it. All right, folks, stay tuned for more coverage. All right, hey everybody, welcome over to the uh, Q and A table. We got Mike Ritchie here from uh, Rather Dashing Games. Uh, going to uh, answer some of the questions here. So, uh, first of all, uh, let's go back up here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, uh, he, <laughs> a war gamer. <laughs> Uh, are, are negotiations always one-to-one, -one, or can they have like three-way negotiations? Uh, anything you want. Three-way, six-way. Yep. Anything. We've we've done some of the craziest negotiations. Like I said, uh, again, the only rules are no stealing, uh -huh. no lying, and you have to honor your agreement. Other than that, anything goes. That's cool. All right. So um, let's see. Uh, sure, that, 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 that. Are there variable player powers? Uh, not at this. Oh well. Yes and no. The variable player powers are all on the board. Okay. You bid for those powers. So yeah. that, it's not that like, I'm not playing a particular character. Okay. So, um, but I can bid to uh, be able to uh, get cards from someone when they collect a caravan. I can bid to uh, have the knowledge of what's coming into the caravans. I can bid on negotiations. So the, uh, anything that manipulates the game is on the board itself to be to be bid on. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, we had another guy that asked earlier on, uh, what do you think is the best player count? Uh, for the game, in, in your opinion? My opinion? Uh, gosh. Uh, t -t 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 probably four to five. Four um, to five. Uh, it gives you enough people to uh, really have a lot of negotiation going on. Uh -huh. um, but it's uh, it's not, I mean, there's, there's not so many people at the table. Yeah. Uh, but there's, it's really a game where you can't get up and get a drink. You have to constantly... <laughs> Yeah, because the, uh, you, you have to constantly watch it, where you're being outbid and what you're bidding on. And then obviously you can't leave while you're negotiating, otherwise right. you're going to be SOL. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> understood. All right, cool. So uh, when, uh, I know this is, uh, you were talking about earlier, this is a homegrown copy. When is this going to be hitting the market and that type of thing? September. September? It's printing right now. So Printing right now. All right, very good. September, the release date, uh, you're going to be hit, having it at a certain convention? Uh, do, do, do. We will be in uh, PAX Philly. Okay, uh, PAX Philly. The and PAX Unplugged one? PAX Unplugged, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll be there, and that's that's pretty much our our, our trade non-trade show fall convention, and then we'll be definitely having it um, here again next year. So okay. It'll still be relatively new. All right. Yeah. Will you be able to demo it at Gen Con, maybe? Uh, we're supposed to have um, early production copies uh, okay. at Gen Con that people can play. Okay, very cool. Let me just uh, scan real quick. I don't know what that means. If you Does want to answer that, you can. Does oh. the company name have any inspiration <laughs> in the old uh, Homestar Runner, Runner Strong Bad email? You gotta have blue hair. <laughs> uh, well, we were all Homestar Runner fans, but the rather dashing, uh, it, we knew about it and we thought it was funny that it, that Homestar Runner had that. Yeah. But um, the rather dashing really came from an amalgamation. The logo is an amalgamation of my partner Grant's and my grandfather's, yeah. who were both very dashing gentlemen of a forgotten era. Like, Grant's grandfather built the Hoover Dam. My grandfather was a bomber pilot in World War II. Yeah, like they cool. were those kind of gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we wanted to bring that um, je ne sais quoi to the table. Okay, yeah. cool. That's cool. All right, well, thanks so much, Mike, for stopping by. We appreciate it. Always Thank pleasure. you guys for your questions. And in just a few moments, we'll be sending it back over to Mark and the interview table. Thanks for staying tuned in.